Hi everyone, I am Ruz Beshad and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to change the data type of a primary key column in a table using T-SQL. But before we get started, make sure you click the subscribe button to get notifications of my upcoming videos. Now let's jump into our tutorial. In this video, I am going to show you how to change the data type of the primary key column of the category table using T-SQL. To this end, I've already created a version of the Northwind database with a slight change to explain the steps of the work using it. So, let's open the category table in design mode. You can see that the data type of the category ID field is a small integer. Suppose, in a design review or upgrade plan, we've decided to change it to integer data type. And also suppose we want to do this using a SQL script that runs from within an application, for example as part of a migration process. First of all, note that this data type change is harmless because integer data type covers all small integer values and therefore we won't have data lost. Before we get into that, let's look at how this is done in SSMS and using Table Designer. It's as easy as clicking on a couple of buttons. But you may get this message. What happens behind the scene is simply that SSMS creates an intermediate table with the structure of original table and the applied changes. Then it copies the contents of the original table into it. Finally, it drops the original table and renames the intermediate table to the name of original one. By default, this drop and recreate process is off in the settings. That's why you get such a message when changing the structure of a table using Table Designer. To work around this, you need to open the Tools menu and click on Options. In the list on the left side, scroll down until you get Designers. Expand it and select Table and Database Designers. Uncheck Prevent Saving Changes that Require Table Recreation checkbox and click on OK button to close the dialog box. Now you can make any changes to the table design. Alright, let's change it back to a small integer one more time and see how to do that using T-SQL. The approach we'll use will be different from the one SSMS uses. Open a new query window and type in the following command. Make sure your database is selected in the databases list. It's a good idea to always put this statement before the other commands. It makes sure that all operations will be done in the right database. Now let's run the script by clicking on the execute button. You get some error messages in the messages pane. The messages tell us there are some objects that are dependent on the category ID column and as long as they exist, you cannot alter the column. So you need to drop the dependencies first, alter the column and then recreate them. The first dependency is pk underscore categories which is the primary key column and you find it under the keys folder of the categories table. The second dependency is the foreign key column in the products table and you can find it under the keys folder of that table. Because the foreign key constraint itself is dependent on the primary key constraint, you cannot drop primary key first. So the order of commands would be as follows. Now you need to replace the comments with the real SQL commands. By using the techniques in my previous video, you can generate the appropriate DDLs and put them in place of comments. Finally, you'll have the following statements. 
Now let's have a try at the running the script and see what the result would be. Okay, you've got another error message and this time it's complaining that the data type of foreign key column is not the same as the data type of primary key column. Because we've changed the primary key to integer but not changed the foreign key yet. They must be the same data type. To fix this, we need to change the data type of the foreign key column, that is category ID of the products table, before recreating the foreign key constraint. The command for this change is very similar to the one that we used for categories table. So let's copy and paste it and then modify it to fit the new change. If you run this newly added command alone, you'll find out that there are additional objects dependent on the category ID column of the products table. These are categories products and category ID indexes that you can find in the indexes folder under the products table. So you have to drop them before changing the column and recreate them afterwards. Again, using the lesson in my previous video, you can do that quickly. Now, let's run the script one more time. You receive the message that says fk underscore products underscore categories is not a constraint. This is because we have already dropped the constraint in the previous run, and now the database is not in a right state. I will provide you with a solution for such situations in the next tutorial, but for now, as a quick resolution, we can restore our database to its original state before the changes. So, let's restore it. Now try to execute the commands once again. No error messages. Also let's check the data type of the primary key column to make sure it's changed correctly. You can do some more checks on your own, like checking the data type of the foreign key column and the relationship between the two tables. As the last point, I would like to organize the commands a little bit differently. I believe this helps us have a better understanding of the whole process. As you see, we've broken our changes into three stages. At stage 1, we drop dependent objects in the foreign key table temporarily. At stage 2, first we drop the primary key constraint in order to be able to change the data type of the primary key column. After changing the data type, we recreate the primary key constraint. Finally, at stage 3, we change the data type of the foreign key column and restore those objects in the foreign key table we dropped at stage 1. As you can see, this is not an easy task and it's a little challenging, but I am sure you have learned some useful and instructive material from it. That's all for now. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.